My name is Ana Alvarenga, and I'm part of the DMAC Campus Fellowship. Yeah. So uh, tonight I'm going to share how God worked in my life, but first I would like to pray. Lord, I just thank you so much for everything that you've done in my life. Um, I just want to glorify you tonight, Lord. Um, I pray that you're going to use my story and you're going to speak through me, Lord, and you're going to show your character and how you're faithful, full of grace, and how you pursued me. And I just want this to be uh, glorifying to you, Lord. I ask this in your name. Amen. Okay. So I grew up in a lovely family. My parents would supply every need we would have, but God wasn't important in our house. My mother would go to the Catholic church a few times, and I went to Catholic Sunday school for about a year, but I don't remember anything from it besides the Lord's Prayer. My grandparents are stronger believers of spiritualism, which believes that we are saved by our good works, and we are reincarnated until we are good enough to go to heaven. I grew up listening to this, and for a very long time, what I knew about God was what they would tell me or what I would read in spiritualism books. I used to believe that I needed to be good to be saved. And more than that, I used to believe that I needed to be reincarnated until I was perfect enough to go to heaven. So I would try really hard to be good, but it did not sustain me for long. In 2015, my freshman year of high school, I entered a relationship that quickly became my idol. After a while, I realized he couldn't satisfy my emptiness, so we broke up. This feeling of dissatisfaction caused me to aspire into drugs, alcohol, pornography, and sexual sin. I would embarrass myself by getting drunk and passing out, looking for approval from my friends, while keeping high grades to please my parents. Everything I did was in an attempt to fulfill my soul. But at the end of the day, I was just so miserable inside. I did not have a relationship with my brother. My mom would, my mom would always be crying because she was so worried about me. And fights with my dad were almost daily. In 2019, after my senior year, I lived by myself in the biggest city in Brazil. If you couldn't tell by my accent so far, I am Brazilian. I started to consider ending my life because the pain in my heart was too much to carry. I started to hurt myself because I wanted to be able to control the pain that I was feeling. Oftentimes, I would wonder why I was in so much pain and even my family wondered, where did they go wrong? Well, now I have an answer. I used to feel a void. During the pandemic, I had a false sensation that I was doing better. I stopped going out, stopped drinking, and did not have any relationships with guys. I stopped doing everything I was doing before. I would read books about spiritualism and would study them with my family. I remember thinking I had it under control. The, thir the truth did not take too long to hit me in the face. We do not have anything under control. We do not have the righteousness to do things right. It says in Romans 7, 19, for I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. After a year, I went back to the old patterns. I knew it was wrong, but I would not stop myself from doing it. At the moment, some part of me would feel good about doing whatever I wanted. But I would come back home and beg to a God that I did not believe existed to fix me. I would feel guilty, weak, and wrong about asking for something that I thought I needed to do it alone. I would pray, but I did not used to believe that he was listening. I used to believe that if God was real, he had left me alone. In August of 2022, I restarted my life. It all went really fast. I visited my brother in Utah in January. And in August, I was moving to the United States to be a student at DMACC in a state I have never heard it about it before. The international advisor from DMACC, Steve Rood, introduced me to Deborah and Leo, a Brazilian couple from Wano Creek, who introduced me to Anna Edwards, who introduced me to Campus Fellowship. I thought I believed in God, and I liked the idea of making friends, so I started attending all the events. 
A few weeks later, Laura Jensen shared the gospel with me for the first time, and it was mind-blowing. I remember thinking, what do you mean it's not by your works? She could probably see my eyes shining as I was listening. Although I really wanted to be true, I did not believe it could be. A couple weeks after that, at one of the services of Fall Conference of 2022, my heart finally understood that the gospel was true. My eyes were open to the truth that Jesus had taken on my sins at the cross, which told me that the void would finally be filled with a strong and firm foundation. But my sinful nature needed to die. It took me many Bible studies, midweeks, Sunday services, and a lot of prayers from friends. I finally decided to give my life to Christ in October of 2022, and I am shaped every day by him. During this last year, I died so many times, and I would feel his work on me, which would times be hard and painful. My friends once told me, it hurts because a part of you that you knew for so long needs to die in order for you to change. Jesus took my place. It is no longer I who live, but Christ that lives in me. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For our sake he meant him to be no sin. He made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. I am worthy because my worth is found in Christ. I walk with God because I am a new creation in Christ. And as I do, I know there will be many trials and many truths to face. As it says in Romans 5, not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Being saved did not solve all my problems. In fact, gave me a clear vision to see them better. But I know I can cry out to my Father, and he will help me. He will hold my hand and show me the way if I allow him to. I no longer need to cry out to a God that I doubt the existence of. I feel his presence when I pray. I know he holds my hand when I have no clue what I'm doing. It is hard to be far from my family. It is hard to learn a new culture. But I know in the deepest part of my soul that God has a plan for me. He brought me from 5,000 miles to hear the gospel. He was listening when I was crying out. He was waiting, preparing my heart to receive the truth, to hear that I can have a relationship with him. And it is all because my identity is now found in Christ. A key was turned in my heart. I don't need to be perfect. In fact, I cannot. I was dead in my sin, and Jesus brought me to life. Whenever I try to be nice now, it is because I want to follow his commands. I want to have him completely flood my life with his will. I don't want to go away from him ever again. And I know that whenever I start believing in lies, he will be there to show me the truth. It is because of God's grace that I can stand here and proclaim I have faith in Jesus. My heart is transformed because of his death and resurrection, not because of my actions or abilities to sustain myself. Everything that I am is because he allows me to be. Everything that I have, he gave to me. I restarted my life in another country. I found Jesus. He is everything that I've been looking for. No one can find peace or joy outside of Jesus Christ. And I know nothing can fulfill us except his love. Thank you. Yeah.